Three toots means you're backing up. Hi, this is Burr Stewart, and welcome to another operations video in my series. I had the fortune this weekend of operating on an O-scale layout, took some amazingly huge pictures since O-scale is so much bigger than HO, so I thought I would put it all together for you in about a 15-minute summary of what was about a three-hour operating session. Here's the three-track town I started out in. I took the 12-wheeler, grabbed a tank car that had to be delivered in a caboose, and off we went. There's me riding in the cab. Oh, oh sorry. I ran into somebody in the aisle and accidentally turned my throttle up. Oops. This snow shed slash tunnel portal is the dividing line between two rooms in the layout. The one that had the original town I started in, called Cedar, and the peninsula that we'll be heading to now, called Fir and Maple. Is there anything better on a model railroad than a view looking down a bridge? I don't think so. Here's another example. I don't care if we have to back up the locomotive. It just looks cool. Now you can see the stock pens and the team track in the town of Maple. We're going over that, but we'll be switching cars in there later. This upper deck peninsula is in the center of the room, so you'll get to see pictures from both sides. No self-respecting O-scale layout is complete without a super detailed donkey engine on skids, right? Here's an overview of both sides of one aisle. The branch line I was working on was the upper level on both the right-hand side and the left. The left side had a very beautiful photo backdrop, a log dump, and a large detailed sawmill model. Here are some close-ups of those. The track plan for this branch line is pretty straightforward, except that it involved a switchback move. To go from the mainline interchange at Sequoia, you had to run forward to Cedar and then back down into Fir in order to switch Maple. You can see here that they used the standard car cards and waybills, which were very straightforward. One feature I thought was really interesting was some metal brackets screwed onto the NCE throttles to allow the throttles to hang from a neck strap, and this made it really easy to operate. It's a clever idea. Well, now back to the switching action. What we're doing here is I've pulled a bunch of cars out of the team track and stockyard over the town to the right, and I'm pulling it over to the left so that I can shove at least some of these cars back to the interchange yard on the other side of the room. Actually, what I ended up doing was running around six of the cars and pulling them with the caboose in the back. It took me a long time to figure out how to do it in the limited space that was available here, so I won't bore you with all of that.
In the end, I got my train together, headed over to the town of Cedar, ran around the train again, and then headed back over to the interchange yard on the opposite side of the room. If you're not following all that, don't worry about it. The main thing is to enjoy these pictures of these beautiful locomotives and freight cars. Be specific. Ship Union Pacific. Well, we've gone over that steel bridge and now we're heading through the dual tunnel portals and coming back to the town of Cedar to do our runaround. For this shot, I tilted the camera up so you could see the mirror that he has set up at a 45 degree angle, since this is an upper deck, to let people see what they're doing if they're not as tall. I have a couple of mirrors set up like this on my layout as well. While I was fussing around in the town of Cedar, I looked down in the deck below and saw this nice train blowing by. There wasn't a grade crossing right there. I think the engineer was just blowing for your entertainment. Much obliged. It's nice with the heavier O-scale equipment, you can hear the clickety-clack of the wheels on the rail joints. I followed this train for a little while. I hope you don't mind the digression. I noticed there was a nice refinery on the backdrop, but the sticky tape had lost its sticky, so it was leaning in a weird way against the wall, so I stuck it back up there hoping that that would help, but actually it didn't last long, as you'll see. Well, back to the job at hand, I was able to run around the train in Cedar and then head over to the interchange yard where these cars needed to be left on the siding for mainline trains to pick up. This panning shot gives you a chance to admire all the detailed rock carving that was done by my friend Eric Van Nice over the years here. It's always nice to have a farmhouse and a caterpillar tractor on a hillside, isn't it? It's quite impressive what a realistic photo backdrop will do for a train layout. Isn't it? When I got over to the interchange yard with that train, I noticed on the other side uh, a different train coming by the coal loader there and off into the distance. And I thought I'd give you that little S-curve view. Very nice. I'm not sure how big this layout room is, but this is O-scale, so that view has got to be at least 20 feet long. Well, no rest for the weary. 
Here we are coming back from the interchange car, uh, yard with another six cars that we need to set out in the various towns along our branch line. That's a great caterpillar tractor load. Uh, that'll be spotted over on the team track in Maple when we get over there. And these three stock cars are replacements for the ones that we pulled out of the peninsula earlier. Now we're rounding the corner and coming into Cedar where we can once again run around the train and proceed back to the peninsula. I was distracted by that whistle signaling a reverse move and saw that Jim was down at a factory here setting out a boxcar. You don't mind if we watch this for a minute, do you? And now we have two trains on parallel decks. Well, after a bunch more switching, I got this train turned around and headed back to the peninsula. Here you can see that I made it over there and I was switching the stock cars back to where they belonged. I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I wanted to give you a picture that I did in fact get that caterpillar load spotted at the team track where it belonged. I like the scene of the loggers on the hillside too. Well, after much more switching, we've got our second run all set up to go to the interchange track. One more view of Eric's nice rock work there. And that is one big pipe load. Nice three-track Climax logging locomotive. And many minutes later, after uh, exchanging cars at the interchange yard, we have a nice load of lumber on this flat car. Another tank to be put back in cedar where we started out. And here we finally arrive at cedar, ready for one last run around in order to move back to the peninsula with some of these loads. Ship Santa Fe all the way. And one final time, 
after we took all those cars over to the peninsula, we came back to Cedar with a caboose hop to put the engine and caboose away for the night. You can see here we previously spotted both the lumber and the tank car right next to the engine house in Cedar. And now our shift is done. It's getting quiet in the town. I'll give you a little aerial overview of what you can do with a three-track town in O scale. I think the shelf's about 18 inches wide, something like that. And I was admiring this snowplow all day, so I thought we should have one final look at it. Not to mention the water tank. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this little digression into the world of O scale. I know I have. So for now, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.